time is uh oh, oh my okay, come on. 640 6 and I call this uh, regular I mean special board meeting to order uh, today is uh, June the 19th 2017 and let the record reflect that president well the only board member that is not here is dr. Richard Rivera other than that we have all members are here Item three, discussion and possible action for the board to consider approval to change the date of the regular board meeting of July 10th, 2017. Dr. Canales. Uh, this item was requested by our board president, Erasmo Lopez, uh, to move the meeting for July 10th, 2017 to Thursday, July 6th, 2017. I will so be out of town, so that's why I'm asking this. and. Um, if the board is, uh, is available for July the 6th, I'll entertain a motion or another date. I'm available on the 6th. Anyone else? I'm available. Yeah, I get I'm back available. on the 5th. I'm available. Okay. Yeah, I'm available. So move. Second. Oh, no. <clears throat> Who seconded it? Patrick. Okay, I have a motion by Isidoro and a second by Patrick to approve moving the meeting from July 2nd, July 10th to July 6th. Any discussion? Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. <coughs> Motion carries. Item four, discussion and possible action for <coughs> to approve the WISD Early Learning Foundation Program collaboration with the Hidalgo County Head Start Program. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, our staff members, Ms. Janie Peña, Ms. Malva Segura, Ms. Sue Peterson have been working on a memorandum of understanding <coughs> for the school readiness model between Wesico ISD and the Hidalgo County Head Start program to serve eligible three and four year olds. Uh, this MOU is gonna make it happen. As we all know, uh, pre-K education is important. There's lots of research that shows that early childhood education is the link to close the achievement gap for second language learners and for children from economically disadvantaged backgrounds. Uh, this program will give kids an early start in developing vocabulary skills, social skills, literacy skills, fine motor skills, and will help get our kids ready for kindergarten. So we're requesting and recommending the approval of the Memorandum of Understanding uh, with Hidalgo County Head Start Program. So moved. I'll second. We have a motion by Andrew and a second by uh, Oscar. Any discussion? Yes. Which Head Starts do these include? These include the Head Start. Uh, Ms. Benya, will you please? Uh, we're looking at six classrooms, 120 students at the bridge area of FDR, and it's a Head Start that's moving the yes. location. It's Head Start uh, Westlaco 1, located in La Placita, uh, are asking to move to one of our facilities. And in doing so, they will be moving four classrooms, which, which we uh, also had an MOU with and sending two teachers. So, but in moving to FDR, to the Northbridge area, there's a, a, a group of classrooms. And uh, they would take six classrooms instead of four, increasing the student population by 40 students. And they would take uh, two more classrooms for offices and a kitchen kitchenette area to receive the food. Um, they would have their own janitorial services, food services. All we would provide would be the um, facilities and the teachers. Ms. Peña, I know at one time we had reached out to the one, the possibly the ones in Mercedes. Did anything ever come? You mean the uh, TMC? And is, is the, that, no. Yes. The, the formerly Texas Migrant Council teaching and mentoring communities, we're still working with them. They also wanted to move into those facilities. They would like to have four classrooms. Um, and it's a work in be? progress right now. Okay. They would bring in an additional 60 students. 60. And they would come bring the students from Mercedes over here. Let me ask you another question, if you don't mind. Are there any other centers around our, our Mid Valley area that maybe we can reach out to since we're the only district that kind of does it? Um, where it could possibly enroll and get our enrollment up? Uh, well, yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I sent out an email to Dr. Canales and to other uh, cabinet members. Hidalgo County Head Start, the, um, the director, executive director reached out 
and there's a possibility, it's a work in progress, we're still researching it. They asked us if we would take 200 of their students that are located in Donna. These are Head Start students, they are not Donna ISD students, they are Head Start students. Uh, some of them are from Westlaco, not all of them, some of them live in Donna, but they asked, they have 10 classrooms, and they asked that we would send five of our certified teachers. The, the reason why is because Donna ISD does not want to send teachers to them. They, they're not willing to, to do that. Uh, but the uh, Hidalgo County Head Start people firmly believe that sending public school teachers into the Head Starts has really made a tremendous difference for the students. They're really being prepared for public <coughs> education. And all the districts have gone into partnership with them with the exception of Donna and Progreso at this point. So that's just Dr. starting, Canales, those are talks that are starting. Dr. Yes, Canales, if you could please, I know right now we're only voting on the 40, mm -hmm. uh, but the potential of the 60 and the potential of 200, so that's 260, you know, we're gonna keep our ADA at, at the 16-1, you know, uh, the additional students will help the ADA. Right, and we'd, and we'd be happy to research the impact on enrollment for students in a way, and just to see the impact on enrollment. I'm not too sure right now if, if you're in Donna ISD, whether it'll count for enrollment or whether we'll be sending teachers and not generating the ADA. So we'd, we'd have to That's look at possible That's something we have solutions. to research. Right. If it would have to be open enrollment district, there's a lot of other issues that okay. need to be looked at. We can find research. that and send it up in the update, please. Okay. Logistically speaking, for the pickup and drop off at Roosevelt, has that been worked out already? Yes, sir. Parking for parents, uh, for Head Start parents, has also been worked out. Playground has been worked out. Everything has been, uh, yeah, for the facilities. Uh, they, the, the classrooms were in a such condition that they would only take, could only take 17 students according to licensing, but because we're putting an uh, extra bathroom facility in the classroom area, they can now each have 20 students per classroom. So we're gonna have 120. Okay, awesome. It's 120, right? Yeah, well that's a good thing. Uh, does it affect our, our dollars, Andres? Our budget? Do you have the money? Yes, well, uh, we'll, we'll need more uh, in, uh, additional vacancies on teachers okay. to provide for that. We we'll have to, like Ms. Peña said, look at the enrollment figures and more or less come up with a projected ADA Okay. Because the money comes from actually coming to school, not to be enrolled. So, comparing the, for example, the Health Academy, the younger students, how mm -hmm. often they come to school, we can come up with a uh, projection of ADA and give you better information on that that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, please. The the one thing I also want to do, since you all are working and, and moving forward on this, is uh, looking at all day, all day classes for the for the little little ones. So, good job. All pre K. Not just head, because Head Start is already all day. Right. Our pre-K. Right, the rest of yeah, the Yeah, the one that is not right. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Any further comments? Okay, all those in, in uh, favor of approving the, the Early College Learning Foundation program, in collaboration with Hidalgo County Head Start <coughs> program, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Motion carries. Item five, discussion and possible action to approve a lease agreement with Hidalgo County acting by and on behalf of Hidalgo County Head Start program. Dr. Canales. Hey, we're uh, recommending your approval uh, of the lease with Hidalgo County for the use of FDR by the Hidalgo County Head Start program. For some reason, staff explained it as grant requirements for Head Start. Head Start can't lease from us, but the county's willing to do that so that we can get the program started. I'm so, approved. All right, we got me and Patrick. Patrick? A second. And a second by Oscar. Okay, we have a motion by Patrick and a uh, second by Oscar to approve a lease agreement with Hidalgo County acting by and on behalf of Hidalgo County Head, Head Start program. Any discussion? I have a question uh, for legal. Um, I just want to make sure that uh, there's no, nothing's going to come back and bite us later. Uh, I'm totally for it. But make sure that, that our legal department checks uh, all the contracts and uh, that make sure that they're, they're in, in line with uh, our, our laws. This was reviewed by legal counsel, I believe. We've, our office yes. has reviewed it and we're okay, we're okay so with it's good to go. The lease, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any further comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. 
Motion carries. Item 6, discussion and possible action to approve the summary of policy recommendations as prepared by TASB Policy Service. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, in February, TASB, we had a TASB representative work with our district and campus level administrators to review policies. This was considered an audit of our localized policy manual. Uh, the next step for us tonight, and we recommend this, is to take actions on the summary of recommendations resulting from this review session, and that you're not adopting at this point any policy changes, which you are, is you're adopting the summary for TASB to review, and then we'll bring it back to you once that review happens for the policy revision. So this is just the approving the summary of the recommendations, and leading this effort was Sergio Garcia. Thank He's you. here to answer any questions. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Canales. Good evening, Mr. Lopez and members of the board. Um, on February the 21st and 22nd, uh, TASB Policy Services and West Echo ISD did, in fact, conduct a policy review session of the district's local policies. My understanding is that it had been quite a while be, uh, since the last uh, policy review, um, maybe as, as long as 10 years. Um, <clears throat> the policy review session uh, included 44 policies to be exact. A representative from TASB led the review and the district administrators provided feedback on the policies pertaining to their respective departments. We received the packet with the summary recommendations, which is what you have before you, <clears throat> and the annotated policies in early March. Eight policies were deleted, 25 were revised, nine were replaced, and two were added. Uh, I did consult with Dr. Rivera, uh, and I did inform uh, Mr. Kennedy that I would be meeting with Dr. Rivera since they are members of the, uh, the board member representatives in the policies committee uh, because I wanted some guidance as to how to present these since 44 policies is, uh, is, is a lot. I didn't want it to make it so cumbersome for you to have to sit here and listen to uh, 44 policies. <clears throat> Excuse me. The different departments uh, who are impacted by the policy changes did review the recommended changes. And tonight we are bringing to you the summary of the TASB recommendations for your approval so that we may send them, uh, send TASB the board response again. As Dr. Canales said, you are not uh, taking action on the uh, policy themselves. We are just uh, uh, bringing forth or bringing to you the uh, policy recommendations from TASB. However, there are four policies that we don't agree with and we would like the board to be aware of and uh, get some input uh, from you. We will review these uh, shortly. Then after reviewing the, po the approved responses on the proposed changes, TASB will make the appropriate changes on the files and they will order a reprint of our district manual, which will be sent back, and then that is when you will approve the changes uh, to our policies. At this time, I would like to just present four policies that are in question. If you look at the list that is before you, the first one we checked no is to DEC local. And uh, the, the, uh, the summary report that you have did not include, if you notice in red, I went ahead and included just a very, very brief title of those policies to make it easier for you. Um, so if you look at the, four po the first policy, that was in question that we answered no to. That's the DEC local on leaves and absences. And the reason for this is because this policy, uh, TASB struck out the information where it talks about the professional employees uh, that are docked $40 for each full leave day used and $20 for each half day used. As well, paraprofessionals and auxiliary employees shall be docked $20 for a full leave day and $10 for each half leave day used. Uh, we don't agree with this. Um, we would like to consider keeping it the same with your approval. The reason for this is because, um, first of all, Ms. Melva Segura, in case you have any questions, she's here to answer on, on uh, because this is a human resources uh, <clears throat> policy, but she did uh, have some information that she would like to share with you. Good evening, members of the board. I went ahead and provided you with a packet with information that we'd like to share with you. As Mr. Garcia mentioned, uh, we did have the option of not including this policy uh, as part of the review. 
However, we had previously received a request from a, uh, Mr. Nieto for us to take a look at this policy. This is one of the popular policies that is kind of mentioned every two, three years. And I'd like to explain the reason why we are one of the very few, if not the only, in our region that is still charging employees for uh, leave docks. And so this is a, a common request that comes up. And uh, I'd like to share with the new board members the information as to the justification why we have continued with the same practice. So for that reason, we elected to leave it on the review so that we can provide this additional information to you so that you can make your uh, decision based on that. So in your packet, I went ahead and included a summary of the money that is generated through the employee docs. And I believe the annual total due to the uh, dog collection is 730589 I also did a little breakdown for you. Aside from uh, the employee docs for leaves and absences, we also cover substitute pays, which have to cover the classroom anytime an employee is absent. So the total pay for substitutes for uh, the 16-17 school year was 2.1 million, almost 2.2. The docs that were generated from the professional teaching staff were $638,639. And so that left a difference of $1.5 million. So I wanted to share this information with you because removing and considering removing this uh, policy and not charging employees for docs, we would have to totally fund the substitute pay of $2.2 million. So in Docking these small amounts, it helps us generate some of the costs to cover their classrooms. And part of the justification in your packet, I also included a TASB salary teacher survey. And this is something that we've kind of mentioned uh, during the taper report presentation, during the budget presentation workshops, that while 20 and $40 uh, dollars is, is not a lot, uh, some employees might feel that it is. It, it does help kind of curve the uh, absenteeism uh, with staff. But if you really consider the teacher pay uh, scale, we are, as I've mentioned, we're above the, the region and the state. I've provided that information to you. In every category from zero, a first year teacher, all the way up to 20 years and the highest range, we are above 100% on the, uh, compared to the market. I did highlight for you there are only two districts uh, nearby, which is La Jolla ISD and Laredo United, that are a little bit slightly above our starting pay. And so we feel that uh, because we are one of the highest, if not the highest paid, we have great benefits as far as our health insurance. Uh, we do feel that this is a practice that we would want to continue. It, it generates money that is being uh, recovered to pay substitutes to cover those classrooms. And so we would like to recommend that we continue with the same practice. Okay. So just uh, <clears throat> right now, uh, like a, for a teacher, and she calls in sick, we dock them, what, $40? Yes, we dock $40 for a full day of sick leave, and we dock $20 for a half day. For paraprofessionals, that, that fee is cut in half. $20 for a full day and uh, $10 for a half day. Not, not every time you're off. No, correct. Only for personal days. Yes. For, only, for, only, for, only for personal, right? Yes. Um, not for sick days. Not the for example was provided was for sick. If I'm a teacher and I'm sick correct. and I call in, will I be docked? Correct. No. No. I'm sorry. Say if I'm a teacher and I call in, I'm sick and I have to be home sick. Or yes. The doctor's no, sick. you're correct. It's only for personal. Okay. Yes. Okay. And again, I've never agreed with it, and I still don't agree with it. Even though I understand uh, the ex the extra money that that the district does get, uh, and yes, we're the highest paid in the in in the valley. But you look at all the other districts that don't charge anything, and yet you can compare whoever's third, that's a thousand dollars behind Westco. They don't charge, you know, and that's just, I believe in that and, and you know, I understand uh, the monies and so forth, but I believe uh, in the long run for teachers and staff, I don't think they should be done. But that's my opinion. How many days do they get uh, 
They get five uh, from state and five personal. Right. So it's a total of 10. 10 personal? Yes. 10 per year. Five and five men. So it's a total five of 10 five. days. And those are the ones that carry over? Uh, the uh, state do. Coach, I'm along with you as far as that, but I would compare the same districts and look at what they get as far as their benefit package, Correct. what they pay into their insurance as Correct. opposed to True. $9 we pay here. And maybe that kind of offsets it and balances it out. So although we may not like it, you know, I agree. But again, it may what, balance out. What percent of their of their pay would you say they're getting docked? Is it half? <laughs> oh, it's it's it, well. If you look, at it's forty times five. It will be two hundred dollars. It will be two hundred dollars a year. Fifty thousand. It's a, it's. A I know, but on, on a daily, what a teacher makes daily, you know. Teacher on average. Would you is say the, the forty dollars is? The daily rate could vary from. It's a, year, it's a very years. small amount. What's the first year's teacher rate? At forty-seven, whatever we're at, forty-seven <coughs> two. Andres, you're the numbers guy. Yeah, very little the amount of that, that they will get docked. <coughs> but let me ask a question: Is this across the district, or is it just teachers? Everybody. Everybody. Everybody, right? Everybody. 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 Professionals, paraprofessionals. And so we have the forty twenty versus the twenty ten for para Correct. and the all manual trades. Well, uh, we're not voting on it today no. anyway. No. But no, no, it's no, 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 no. We, we just wanted to give you information Correct. so that you can uh, understand uh, the recommendation yeah. that we were making as to why we would want to continue the same way. True. We're, we're trying to um, generate as much as we can to alleviate any local costs without having to let go of any uh, positions or staff members. And so we acknowledge that while nobody would want to be charged uh it has to come from somewhere right. and uh, we're just trying to help and, the, and the fund andrew has a good point uh, the school district just paid for the health insurance which is quite a, a big amount mm -hmm. and the tras and so forth and of course our salary are up there but still i don't believe in docking yeah. uh, when when people are going to be out I, that's just my personal opinion oh, how uh, many how many other districts have similar policy do we know Actually, I think we're the only one in our nearby. Um, yes. And that was the reason that TASB kind of uh, selected the policy because in reviewing uh, for this update, they kind of take out what is not the norm for their TASB policies, and this is one of them because we're one of the very few that continue doing it. Right. But and we've been at the 4020 Correct. since we... And it's a policy that continues to be brought up because we are you know, the only in our area. But like we mentioned, we're way above also our region in, in the salary, and that has always been the justification. And so it's continued on throughout the years. True. So if we're... How many days does a teacher work? 186 or 187? 187. So if we were to, uh, you know... Uh, Hold on. Okay. Okay. So that's... Their daily rate is probably about 252. Yes. So the most out-of-pocket is going to be 200. For the year, yeah. For the year, yeah. So... It's one day. It's one day. Just saying. No, I, no, no. I know. So if we, would, if we wouldn't dock the, the, uh, the employees, then we would have to budget that amount, which is the uh, 6, or 638639 additional money. Additional money to the budget, right? Correct. Correct. Because substitute pay does come out of the local fund. So Not unless you had an incentive program for uh, attendance for teachers, <laughs> then you could offset that if you had an attendance incentive. But... We don't, so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there's... <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. Whatever we decide later on, yeah, that's good information anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yes, you. And that's why I wanted to provide it to you. You know, so and if you look at the, and I know this is a school uh, government entity, but in private industry, you don't show up. You don't, you don't get, get paid. paid. <laughs> and they take the full thing, not just a little bit. I'll Correct. take the $40, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Thank Ella. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good information. the summary. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Patrick and a second by Andrew to approve the summary as uh, prepared by TASB Policy Service. Any more discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. <coughs> Item 7, discussion of possible action um, for the board to approve. Mr. Lopez, please forgive me to interrupt, but uh, we still have three more. Okay. That we'd like to oh, introduce to you. Three more. Yes, three more, okay. so that you can be aware of, of those the policies. These are three more where we're saying we're not agreeing with the with the TASB revisions, correct? Right. Okay. 
Okay, so <clears throat> the next one is uh, DHE local. Already, already let, me, let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. Uh, you're going to present, but we've already voted. So this is just for information purposes. Yes. Can we go back? My suggestion would be to hear the proposals and okay. if, if take them as informational, and then we can sit on the vote. Yeah, there's Unless no. We decide otherwise. We can address it if somebody's going to change their mind. But I would say just hear hear the proposals and see what uh, the thought is. Out. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Okay. May I continue? Okay, let, let's continue and, and give us the, the other ones. And at that point, we might change our mind as to if we want to approve it or not. Is that what you're saying? Right. Uh, yeah, correct. Right. So do we have to, you, to call the vote, vote back? Yes. If you, you have to rescind. Here, here's the thing. You're, what, you're, what you're accepting right now is just the summary as right. presented to you. Okay. You're not, okay. You're not actually accepting the, the revisions. Okay. What, what, the summary as it's being presented to you by staff right now okay. is going to be sent off to... to uh, TASB and they will incorporate the revisions as we accept them. Right now, you've accepted them with rejecting four of, of the proposed revisions, which is a recommendation which by is the district. Staff's right. So we'll I, come I believe back at a later time. Correct. Which is why I think Mr. Okay. Kennedy went that route. We believe you. We trust you. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. Thank you. And and uh, and yes, I, I failed to mention that there was uh, 44 policies and that most of them we agree with. It's just these four that we had concerns Correct. on. The next uh, policy is the DHE uh, local, <clears throat> and this one deals with searches and alcohol and drug testing. This one also um, I, I discussed with uh, Mike De La Rosa. Uh, this involves the uh, employee who operates a commercial motor vehicle, uh, including a bus, and commits a drug-related uh, DOT violation. And here, it says that uh, the driver uh, may be reinstated as a driver if he or she successfully completes a turn to duty test. And the employee may also be subject to follow up tests. In my discussion with uh, Mr. De La Rosa, and Mr. De La Rosa, if you'd like to add something, um, we disagree with this because we don't bring the employees back after they have been, after they have tested positive for uh, violating a drug-related, vi you know, violation, then we don't bring them back. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. President. We've always had a zero tolerance policy when it comes to drugs, especially if they're driving a school bus. So certainly we would not want to take the risk if there's a, a positive drug test, you know, whatever, you know, hoops they may jump through, we feel it's, we feel it's not in our best interest to bring them back. Okay. But not, not just only <clears throat> a school bus, is that correct? Yes. Any, that any, includes anybody. Anybody. What, what, but but what under if, this policy, it would include a school bus. Okay. So like a coach that gets a DWI, do y'all find out about it or, or, or how does that work? Y'all get a... They have a certain amount of time to report it. To include these HR. are these are if I may these are people that are that are in safety sensitive positions right so mainly your bus drivers your maintenance workers uh, there are some staff that are considered a, in a safety sensitive position because they do transport students say in a school suburban so as those come up if they're professionals then they would go through the regular administrative process uh, that they're required to go through with TEA if we let them go for that so but not all teachers no just our safety sensitive right. individuals. That's what I've seen a coach that drives Potentially, kids. yes. Right. This could potentially cause this uh, professional or coach uh, to be um, let go, but that's another process because they'd have to go through a hearing through right. TEA. They're, they're okay. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> the next policy is DMA local, and this uh, deals with a required staff development. Um, and this one is just a, 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 a matter of language. Um, in this particular uh, policy, it talks about the um, prior approval for professional and paraprofessional person, personnel attending conventions, conferences, workshops, and seminars on weekends, holidays, summer vacation, or other non-instructional time and be credit with time equivalency. Here it says staff development, but we have the t uh, time equivalency program, which has additional requirements. So it's just a matter of language. Uh, Ms. Peterson, I don't know if there's anything you'd like to add on that, since this uh, deals with staff development. 
Uh, the issue was that the way it read, it, someone could read that we're approving any out-of-town conference or weekend event to count for time equivalency, and we are not approving everything for time equivalency, so that has to be approved. So for staff development, uh, teachers have to accrue 300 hours over a period of time to renew their license, so it does count for that, but it does not count for our time equivalency always. That's got to be approved. It has separate procedures. Correct. What, yes, the last one. The last one is uh, the FFAC local uh, deals with medical treatment under wellness and health services. And this particular policy uh, talks about um, the district shall purchase non-prescription medication that may be used to prevent or treat illness or injury in the district's athletic program. So I went ahead and reviewed this with uh, Coach uh, Riojas. It says only a licensed athletic trainer or a physician licensed to practice medicine in the state of Texas may administer this medication and may do so only if, and then it stipulates in what uh, circumstances. However, in my discussion with Coach, he says none of our athletic trainers um, give the medication to the student. So this is something that we'd also like uh, to, for them to, to leave out of the policy. Coach, I don't know if you have anything else to add on that. Correct. We, um, as a former athletic trainer, we, we just, it's just not a good practice, in my opinion, to provide medication to students, especially during a contest, uh, simply because of X reasons such as, you know, the students are allergic to a certain medication. There's a lot, a lot of students with allergies nowadays. And then also when you give a medication, you can also uh, kind of help keep very serious symptoms from coming up, such as concussions and things of that nature. So we don't give medication to students uh, after school, during school and especially not during the contest. Okay. And that's the way it's always been? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. That's uh, the four of them? Yes, sir. Okay. And, uh, and just uh, FYI, I did review the legal policies just to ensure that we were not violating any of these local policies. Um, so, uh, again, these are just uh, uh, recommendations from TASB. Uh, we will provide the chart that you have. We were supposed to select yes or no. And then at the very end, they, again, they will send us the final manual, and then that's when you will vote for those policies. And okay. if we need to make any changes at that point, we will do so. Okay. Okay. All righty. Uh, and by the way, if there's any questions on any of the other 40 policies, staff is here to answer your questions. So. No? We're good. No. All right. Thank you. And just to be clear, you, you've now accepted the summary as its recommendation, as it's been recommended by, by staff. Should you want to, at this point, after hearing uh, what, uh, what Sergio said, uh, revisit anything, it would take a motion to revisit and, and rescind. But um, Okay, well, just earlier we voted to accept the revisions, and now we've, uh, we've heard them, and the recommendations by TASB and our staff. So does anybody have a, a concern that they want to address? No. Everything's good. And, and these will come back to you yeah. later. So, so really we're just uh, approving the recommendations. They'll come back to us and then we'll approve the actual document. Correct. That, Is that that's correct? correct? Okay, so we're, we're good on that. Moving on to item number seven, discussion and possible action for the board to approve a change order for the installation a vinyl composition tile, VCT, at West School East High School Library as part of the tile installation project at five school campuses, RFP number 17-05-39. Dr. Canales. At this time, we're requesting your approval of change order number one, which consists of the following. Reflooring of West School East High School Library. Uh, please note that it was not part of the original scope of work. However, administration initiated this request due to the condition of the current flooring, floor covering. Since the base project already included tiling of the East High School front <coughs> offices, uh, administration's position seems logical to move ahead and request this change order. This change order is needed due to the condition of the existing carpet, but it would also save us money since work crews are already on campus. So the total cost for change order is $21,145. 
uh, administration, and I am recommending that you approve change order number one for the tile installation project at five campuses, which consists of installing vinyl composition tile at Wesley East High School Library. And we've been in contact with Mr. Cantu about this, Dr. Cantu about this. And it's coming from the maintenance tax note we've already passed, right? The maintenance tax note. Uh, no, no. Oh, I'm it's, sorry, yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Project, yes. Double checked, yes, it is. Right. Then I move to approve. I'll second. We have a motion by Patrick and a second by Oscar to approve change order number one for the tile installation at uh, West School East High School. Um, discussion? Yes. Um, what's the difference between going vinyl and going tile? Vinyl tile? Dr. Cantu, it's your request. Can you come up, please? You're okay, Andres. I think your question would be, what was original? What were you going to use originally? Yeah. And the, origi the original intent was to refinish the concrete and just leave it as an unfinished concrete. The cost was prohibitive. Uh, we were looking at at least twice the amount. And also with a very short warranty. I think it was one person one came one in one year. with a zero and one came in with a one year, yeah. which told me that that you know, work wasn't very confident. And they didn't think that that would last very long. If, if you think that that's going to be, you know, lasting 5, 10, 15 years, then you'll give a little bit, you know, of a warranty. But when that came back, told me that there was no confidence in the product that they were, you know, proposing. And I didn't want to have to be dealing with repairs to the floor or having <coughs> to redo that on a yearly basis because with a zero-year warranty, there's so no guarantee. So what we approved was all tile at all the schools, right? At the, wanting, at the five and, schools, And correct? you're wanting vinyl. Well, we looked at uh, the no, it's vinyl. The tile, but the carpet best. tile, but that was also cost prohib prohibitive. I, th I think it was uh, 30, almost 33000 So we were looking at, because of uh, the need to get rid of that carpet, we I'm rather I'm okay with removing the carpet and giving you tile, but you're asking me to spend $21,000 more. Just asking why. What, what's the difference between the tile and the vinyl? It's the same thing. I don't understand the yeah. question. He, he was not going to go originally with, with VCT. At all. At, At all. all. Well, it's a ceiling now, the floor. Right? are we sure <clears throat> that the square footage is correct, that they did not include it, and now we're asking for it again? No, 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 no. That area was not addressed. In the that area was never addressed. Oh. We no, took yeah. that out Only because the we this, had is, proposed, yeah, this is a new, this is a new project. Right. Yeah, it's right. a new area. Yes. We had, yeah. we had proposed <laughs> the unfinished concrete look. Okay. You know, the stained okay. concrete, and it's, it's a real nice look, and it's pretty durable. But my understanding is that when the building was built, it was built to be covered. So the finishing on the concrete is going to be different even under the, that carpet. So when you pull that up, there's going to be a lot of sanding and prep work that's going to go into getting that concrete to be uh, mm -hmm. visible. Right. Okay. I'm good. Right. Okay. Well, the only, the only concern I had that, that, yes, that uh, it had been covered the first time around. And, and then that uh, they were doing it again. But if it's no. not, it's no, just it one time. Separate the area. area, separate area, totally. Mm. Okay. We have a motion by Patrick and a second by Oscar to approve the, the change order for the VCT tile installation. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. <sighs> motion carries. And that's only at the library, correct? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. Item eight, approval of a budget amendment in the local maintenance fund for the West Coast High School band to pay for student travel and purchase of some replacement uniforms. Dr. Canales. And we're recommending your approval of the budget amendment as requested. It's $28,000, $10,000 for travel for the West Coast High School band traveling to Richmond, Texas for the first game of the 2017 football season. And it's also $18,000 in general supplies for uniforms that need to be replaced and to provide, uh, make sure the right fit for 210 band students that need a uniform. So this has been looked at by uh, the business office, by our finance coordinator who's there, our band director, and our principal of Wesico High School. So we're requesting the budget amendment, your approval of the budget amendment. Okay. I'll move to approve. So, second. We have a motion by Oscar and a second by Isidoro to approve the budget amendment. 
for to pay for travel expenses and some replacement uniforms. Any discussion? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I guess this is for Oscar and Coach Mike Salinas. You know, just to make sure we don't uh, schedule preseason games, I guess, so far away. Um, you know, look at the cost that we have to spend when we have an abundance of good talent here in the Valley. You know, that, you know, it's not even a 80% of that cost right there. So, you know, just uh, make, uh, I guess make better decisions, you know. I don't know what, <laughs> how we ended up going over there, but. And I, I, don't, I don't think it was, uh, I don't think Oscar was the main one that wanted to go over there. So let's leave it at that. Oh, okay. No, sir. But uh, <laughs> point well taken, sir. Yeah. And yes, we're working yeah. already. Alrighty. Next year is a uh, realignment year. In October, we'll submit our numbers for realignment. Correct. And so we will be getting a new realignment. So we're already networking with uh, trying to reestablish some of the Mid Valley and, you know, Ed Couch, Mercedes, uh, Donna. Good games, good teams, good gate for our, for our schools. Good. Yes, good point there, Mr. Gallego. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, for sir. the public Thank to you. know the. I believe that the team that we're playing was the uh, state champions, or they were they were the state champions last year for 5A. Okay, yes, and they were brought down. They came down here. They came down last, last year. year. Yes, sir. And uh, the way it works out, if they come down, then we have to go up and right. and play in their in right. their yes, field. Sir. It's exactly. a reciprocal, so, reciprocal year. Yes, sir. So it was a, it was a, a huge game down here for us. Uh, I remember uh, yeah. it was at the beginning. Was it the beginning of the year last September year? September second, no? first game. First, first game, uh, they came down, so now it's our turn to go back up there. Right. And yes, it's going to cost us some money, but I'm sure our, our kids were mm -hmm. were exposed to right. to a lot by playing the the state champs. Yes, sir. So it was a good and thing. And we do agree we do agree to a travel expense. So this yeah. year, when our football team goes over there, some of the expense will be given yeah. back to us. But I do agree with uh, with it, with staying home as as close as we can to true. to our guys. And if they want to experience that that kind of talent, then you know well, they got to go three deep, four deep. You know, coach, sorry to put pressure on you, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or they could play Wasco East. There you go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we already do this district, district game. So. Okay. Any further discussion? I just have one comment. I noticed that some of the budget was to um, replace some band uniforms, and I think we're missing 64 uniforms out of Wasco High. So I just think going forward, we should probably implement some kind of uh, system where we can keep better track of the uniform. Yeah, we've, we've, thank you. We've, dis we've discussed that, and we'll be looking into it so that we do have a handle on inventory and to care. Okay. I think as long as that's addressed, I think we're good. Okay. And also another note to say is that uh, uh, make sure that we take care of East, because if we're spending more money on, on uniforms for, for high, of course, it needs to go the same same way for East. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a motion by Oscar and a second by Isidoro to approve the, the budget amendments for the purchase of some band uniforms and uh, student travel. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Item 9. Discussion and possible action to approve a structural engineer to assist the district with the procurement and oversight of construction of a new digital scoreboard for Bobby Lackey Stadium. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, on May 30th, um, approval was granted for the procurement of a new digital scoreboard for Bobby Lackey Stadium. Uh, the district will need the assistance of an engineer that will work independent from the design build method of construction that was also approved on May 30th, just to have oversight of the construction project. We are recommending uh, that we hire Shannon Engineering out of McAllen, Texas, LLC, to assist the district with the procurement and oversight of that construction, and that is for the new digital scoreboard at the stadium, subject to legal counsel review of the agreement. Uh, staff presented this information. The total fee will be 1.75% of total construction costs. Um, and we have Mr. Andres Sanchez and Coach Riojas here, and Amerigo Garza is here to answer any questions if you have them. I think the paper says you, the architect fee will be 6%. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong. 1.75. Bottom paragraph. <clears throat> I was on the next item on the computer here. 1.75. Okay, you all said Shannon. <laughs> Engineering. Shanine. Shanine. Uh -huh. Shanine. I, I was, was going to ask. Shanine. It was my mistake. It's Shanine. Okay. I was, I've never heard of that engineering from. <laughs> it's Canales' eyes. So, so th this is for just a, the structure, the foundation, or, or what? 
Or is it that, is, does that include the whole scoreboard and digital and all that? He's going to review everything. Uh, the company has their own engineers that design the scoreboard. But the structural engineer has to look at the uh, specs for the structure they have, that it can hold the weight of the scoreboard. It's going to be huge. The resistance against the wind, so it's got to go over the whole thing. He had to check the specs that they provide. If I may, Mr. Calero, uh, there is no uh, review by uh, Chinese Engineering for the electrical portion of the scoreboard. So essentially, we're taking it as a product coming in, per se, if I may use an example as a printer. You know, we can hire somebody to come in, connect it, and so forth, and do and, and watch and oversee the installation, but he's not necessarily going in there to check the electronics and the design of the electrical, of the scoreboard. So we've done this before uh, with the existing scoreboard, where uh, the district provided the electrical for the scoreboard up to the point of connection, and then we just uh, went off of uh, the quality that we're getting from whoever we get as a vendor. And we have the 1.75% money allocated for? No, not yet. Okay. Uh, we had mentioned uh, when we approved the uh, agenda item for the metro construction that we were looking at raising the revenue for the scoreboard either by selling the naming rights to the stadium or getting yeah. a financing interest free over a five year loan. Correct. Or we could also get a loan from our depository bank. We check with them and they will give us a loan also. The interest probably like 4%, something like that. But we want to plan on the specs that we're putting up together that we want to finance it for the scoreboard companies. We want to ask for free financing. A couple of companies say they would, so they're going to be part of the criteria we're going to look at. Okay. So this isn't included with the cost, you know, of a, of a, of a scoreboard? Is somebody overseeing? No, because they have to be independent from them, so we have to pay for them. We've done that before when we did design build. On West Coast High School, for example, was built as a design build project. We hired with the Rudy Gomez, it's an architect to be the independent actor checking on what they were doing. Okay. Now, what happens if we need to get it, something <coughs> electrical checked out? He would hire a consulting engineer, and they would charge us based on the fee they charge, the hourly rate they charge. Okay. We do that with other projects as well. Now, can we tell them, uh, because I know that we've been working closely with uh, Trinity Engineering here yes, out sir. of Westlaco. Mm -hmm. Can we add that to the motion to... To, to stipulate that if a structural engineer or an electro mechanical engine, electrical uh, engineer is required to, for him to use uh, Trinity Engineering? Is that, a, is that an option? Yeah, I mean, if the board wants to designate uh, any consulting engineer for electrical engineering, he can. <laughs> yes, because I mean, he, he's the one that uh, that's done most of our work here in, in yes, Westlaco, and he is from Westlaco. And if required. Yes, if now, required. Granted, Right now, you're just selecting the the engineer. Um, there, you're not approving any contract. Uh, right. So uh, maybe what I'd suggest instead is if you want to make that part of the, the contract term, the, you have to include the, that. Well, that agreement is included in the agenda item. So okay. that I think right, that but, but, but we're, the, the process is you select your engineer, and then you negotiate with that engineer, and then you, then you approve the contract. We're not approving any contract tonight. Correct. Well, okay. okay. Is that... Okay. Well, so I was hoping that it would be higher with the contract as well, with all due respect, because we need to work on this uh, item. We Right now, we have releasing tomorrow the request for qualifications to get companies. We expect to get three or four scoreboard companies. At that time, we're going to release a request for proposals where we put more details on the specs for the scoreboard, the financing area, all those items. And if we wait to have the contract, approve the contract till July 10, that's going to put us behind on the process. We could do it, but just going to make us delay yeah. it longer. Well, it's really important that we do hire an engineer, local engineer, for the simple reason that uh, the structure is probably put up all over the United States, all over the country, possibly all the world. And our local engineers know the soil conditions and what is required to hold up a sign like of that size. So really important that we do this. Yes, the, uh, the agreement for the engineer says that in the event of uh, electrical engineering needed, that it will be charged at the outlet rate. So that's what I was saying. We could not. Uh, well, we can't that. make it part of the motion. Uh, my suggestion is that you you uh, you keep the motion as it is. To, uh, select the engineer. Okay. Or, or if it's Janine, select the engineer, and then you can uh, put that as part of the contract later. Once you right. once you receive Correct. the contract, it's before you. Okay. okay. I'll entertain a motion. So move. Second.
Okay, we have a motion by Isidoro and a second by Dr. Rodriguez to approve <coughs> administration recommendation to go with Chanin Engineering as a structural engineer to assist the district with the procurement and oversight of construction of a new district digital scoreboard for Bobby Lacka Stadium. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. <coughs> Item 10, discussion and possible action to approve a modification to the scope of the award to Alvarado Architects and Associates Incorporated related to the construction design for Central Middle School. Dr. Canales. At this time, Board of Trustees, we're seeking your approval and recommending approval of our recommendation to award the electrical upgrades project. I think it's number 10. <coughs> At this time, Board of Trustees, um, I flipped up over that one. Uh, we have the um, scope of work. We're on 10, right? Yes. For Alvarado Architects and Associates related to the construction design uh, for Central Middle School. So just a couple of back um, information on this one. Uh, the Central Middle School Administration, along with the Facilities Committee, has reevaluated the needs regarding the proposed pavilion and has determined that the campus that a camp another campus need is greater in this area administration is proposing to remove the benches and install basketball backboards to use the pavilion that currently exists at central middle school for physical sporting activities making it functional uh, and comparable to the rest of the district so at this time the scope of work we're looking at uh, modifying it to include covered canopy connecting the main campus to the science wing which stands alone and the possibility of adding uh, much needed restrooms in the science building. And so again, no design and no adding of a new pavilion. Instead, the covered walkway and the possibility of restrooms in the science building. Okay. Could you repeat that, please? Originally what happened, what we had is that the board had approved uh, a pavilion mm -hmm. for Central Middle School. In, in discussion <coughs> with the principal, um, she has uh, made it clear to us that she would rather have a covered walkway to lead from, uh, what did you say, Doc? From, from the main building to the science building. Pat, do you want to come up here? That's the one across the street by the band hall? Mm -hmm. Or by the gym, I'm sorry. Behind it's over gym. here, when you Where? the back of the school, it's to the, it's to the right. And so they have a pil pavilion that they could use to put some um, things to play for basketball, but they'd have to remove some benches. Mm -hmm. And instead of creating and building a new pavilion like the two other middle schools that were going to do that, they would rather have the covered walkway to make sure the kids and the teachers are away from the rain and other elements when they're trans, you know, moving periods from the main building to the science building. That's fine. And I think that's yeah. probably a good idea. Yeah. And she has plenty of trees, right, Pat? Yeah, we have plenty of trees. <laughs> that's correct. And I'm so glad that, you know, you all have asked us, you know, for our input. And so, as, as you know, it's an, we're the only middle school with an outdoor campus. And so when it's raining, we have to hold all our kids in. And so it'd be great with that canopy from the main building. They can walk to the science building. They have to get wet. And I don't know, in the 1980s, when they went ahead and they built the, the science building, they didn't add a bathroom. So our kids have to go outside to the main building to go use the restroom I'll move to and so be good to have Second. that mm -hmm. truly appreciate it okay, okay thank you okay so we have a motion by Andrew and a second by Isidoro to approve a modification of the scope of the award to Alvarado Architects and Associates Corporate related to the construction design for Central Middle School and again what we're discussing is changing not making a uh, pavilion. covered pavilion. pavilion correct and adding some other construction that she, that our principal would like to have, which is a, a covered walkway for our students that won't get wet when it rains, and possibility of adding restrooms to the science wing, which is very much needed. I will say that when this uh, item came up a few months ago, I voted against establishing the pavilion, but I think this is a much better idea than spending money on the pavilion. So I will vote in favor of it. Okay, so any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Patrick. Item 11, discussion and possible action to approve the proposal received for the electrical upgrade project at Margo Elementary School, CSP 17-07-62. 
Dr. Canales. Okay, Board of Trustees, we are recommending approval to award the electrical upgrades project at Margo Elementary School to, is it Zetro Electrex LLC from Palmview, Texas. Uh, they did submit the only proposal uh, for this project. And we have Mr. Sanchez here and a medical, Mr. Garza here to answer any questions if you have them. And there's the project uh, in question that we're talking about is uh, is an upgrade to Margo Electric System. Now we're talking about the actual outlet plugs uh, that that are in the classrooms. Is that correct? Yes. Medical can give a better description, but yes. You want to give us a little description <laughs> of the yes, project? Yes, uh, Mr. Lopez. Uh, with me is uh, Fiancé Alvaro. He's with Trinity MEP uh, Engineering. He's a project manager. Um, basically, what we're doing is we're adding more power to the classrooms uh, right now. We're averaging about a circuit per classroom with uh, some of the circuits being wired uh, such that one and a half classrooms per se are using one circuit. Uh, and that's not very practical. And with uh, today's technology, uh, the use of today's technology in the classroom, uh, we really need to have some more power in there. So what it is is bringing in more circuits and each circuit uh, could have as many as you know six to eight uh, receptacles in the classroom, but right now we're, we're proposing three three circuits, two of them specifically to uh, cover the computers in each classroom, and another one to distribute receptacles throughout the classroom, uh, and that's about three receptacles I believe per classroom for the additional circuit. Now, is that the normal of what else, what we have on the other dis other classrooms? Uh, you want to answer that one? You're talking about like a new facility. Well, well, yeah, no, if we were to build yeah. a new facility, is that the standard that you would use? Pretty much, yes, sir, because uh, right now the current building has, like a medical saying, is uh, one, probably two circuits, you know, per classroom. And now, nowadays, you have a typical classroom that has computers, so we, we typically generate and design and engineer a, just so many circuits for computers use, and then we put other circuits for convenience in the classroom. So... Since this building was built in 1983, the design and how it was engineered, it was, you know, I guess back then it was not too many computers. Okay. Now, if I may add, uh, the other thing that, that was uh, uh, caught during the, the uh, design process and the, uh, the assessment of the, of the existing system is that uh, Fidencio uh, saw that the existing uh, electrical switch here needed to be replaced because it's, it's uh, not compliant with code, existing codes. So that's, you know, something that uh, was a high cost item that had to be included on there. And, and I asked Fidencio, because we've had uh, issues and requests before for parking lot lighting, so he added it as an alternate to the campus. And I said, well, let's see what, uh, what it comes in at as far as the cost, because the campus has, has never had any parking or lighting as well. So that's the alternate part of the project design that came in. And administration is recommending approval? We are. The um, team is recommending, and I am recommending approval. Okay. And now, that's where you're going to get the money. Yeah. From the main tax note. <coughs> Do you have the money? Yes. So how much was budgeted? Because uh, we had budgeted some money for this, didn't it's we? 225. The initial amount was 225. We started. We have uh, some uh, on the HVAC. We had budgeted total of 3.7 million within the electrical and HVAC. There are several uh, HVAC units that we've been replacing out of the current budget. So we had the money to make up for the difference. Okay. Now, uh, has this become a hazard to where uh, breakers are popping, wires are getting hot, and and what is uh, what brought this forward? It's not per se a hazard, yet we're not at that point, but uh, the, the staff started uh, uh, calling my department, energy management, and uh, requesting electricians to go assess uh, you know, the, the problems that they were having because breakers were tripping. Okay. And it was because of the overloading of the breakers, too many computers or yeah. you know, uh, uh, yeah. appliances, charging stations, and so forth. Yeah, well, once, once the breakers stop, start popping, it's... Uh it's inevitable that you need to upgrade and, and or, or upgrade or fix or both. And uh, I think we're in a hurry on this because we want to do it during the summer. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So, okay. And you're recommending approval. Yes. And you have the money. Yes, we have. I'll, I'll move to approve. Okay. We have a motion by Oscar. Second. Second, a second by Patrick. 
Any further discussion to on the electrical upgrades for Margo Elementary? Uh, I just want to say, uh, is there any other problems or issues at any other schools? Since we're approving this, is there anything else that we need to start looking at with electrical problems at, at other schools? Nothing at this time. No, Nothing like that I said, comes up. Uh, this is pretty much, as far as I can, I can tell, as far as I'm concerned, the only campus where the electrical system hasn't been touched since it was built. Yeah. Yeah, we've done okay. air conditioning, but uh, nothing on the electrical system. Okay. Okay, so we have a motion by Oscar and a second by Patrick. All those of uh, approving the electrical upgrade project at Margo Elementary. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Item number 12. Discussion and possible action to approve the schematic design for the new field house project at Wesico High School. Dr. Canales. The Board of Trustees on March 9th, 2017, you approved Gomez Mendez Science Architects Inc. from Brownsville, Texas to design the specifications for the construction of the new field house project at Wesico High School. We had several meetings with architect Rudy Gomez and uh, athletic director Oscar Riojas, coach Michael Salinas, who's in the audience, Wesco High School athletic coordinator and head football coach, and Amerigo Garza, our director of energy management, to discuss the layout and location for the new football field house at Wesco High School. We're here to present for your approval at our recommendation, the schemat schematic design. You introduce our... Okay. okay. And we yes, are gonna uh, have a presentation, correct? Yes. Uh, to see it. Okay. <laughs> Here, here the architect, Mr. Monreal, from Rudy Gomez Forum, Government Designs. Good evening, more members, uh, Mr. President, uh, Dr. Canales. Um, real quickly to orient everybody, this is just a general overview of the Wesico campus. We've got the high school here. We're, the highlighted area is the, the area that we're proposing uh, the new addition. Um, So the addition is going to be placed partly on the existing uh, uh, parking area, uh, just, nor just um, west of the existing gym and north of the existing weight room. Um, oops. So the floor plan, it, the highlighted pink areas are your administration area. So the entry is down here. It's facing north, just to orient everybody again. To the, to the top of the page is the practice area, uh, the practice fields, um, and the gymnasium will be down on the lower of the page. So again, you come into the entry, the, the lobby area, you have your secretary and the head coach, you've got your, um, your defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator, and some shared conference rooms. Uh, you have the coaches dressing shower areas with the, the team rooms and the um, the uh, coaches areas there, we've got a divider partition wall to divide that space up into two smaller rooms or open it up for a larger, for a larger meeting space. Um, at the top of the page, we've got the JV locker rooms, uh, which is about, it's, it's 200 lockers um, in that particular space. We've got the shared uh, uh, restrooms, showers, and laundry facilities, the varsity uh, locker room is to the left of that. That's got 70 lockers. And then the support spaces at the end of the building are the garage area where you'd have your um, uh, general storage and the, um, the uh, gators um, to take um, equipment out to the practice area. We've got the training rooms, a couple of offices in that training area, and then the equipment, the equipment room down on the lower side. Total square footage of the project right now, uh, as designed, is 15,400 square feet, uh, approximately. Um, and this is just the beginnings of the, the elevation uh, study that we started. Um, again, this would be facing the north side, so as you approach the building, this is what you would see. Uh, we're proposing um, brick exterior veneer with some stucco uh, accents, um, probably less brick around the sides um, and more towards the front that would be sort of presenting itself to the, to the, to the parking area itself. Um, again, the, the schematic um, layout, 
Rudy's been meeting with multiple people on the layout, so I think everybody's comfortable with, with the current direction. We do have, again, we'll, we'll, once we get to the next uh, step, we're going to be bringing in the consultants. So we'll start to layer in information as far as electrical data rooms and, and, and those types of things. Um, we, the, uh, the structural system is just going to be a structural steel, metal deck, joist system. Um, we'll have HUAC units that are going to be on the roof feeding these particular areas. We'll zone them um, probably the way they're shaded as well into three or four zones. Um, and um, that, that pretty much covers the schematic design, um, unless anybody has any particular questions. Just going back, you're not going to have any of these in there, are you? These tile looking things. In this particular space? You're talking about acoustical tile? Yeah. In Pro inside. Probably is it just wide open to the top? Or? Probably the office areas will probably have acoustical tile. The administration areas um, would have a ceiling of some sort. The locker room areas will not, unless we've got a hard ceiling maybe in the, in the, in the, um, the restrooms or the shower, but we can leave those open, the larger spaces we can leave open to the structure. Does it fall in under budget? Um, I, we're, we're comfortable right now. I think the budget uh, was 2.9. With being at the square footage is 15,000 square feet, we feel pretty confident that we can get this within that budget. Coach Salinas. Yes, sir. You happy with the design? Sir? Are you happy with the design? Yes, sir. We spent... Um, multiple meetings reviewing it and, and trying to find the best setup. Uh, we took the actual dollar amount that was approved, uh, considered the soft costs to prepare the rest of the building uh, for design and visiting with uh, Mr. Gomez and uh, working with uh, Medical and Coach Iohas on the project. Uh, Mr. Gomez has assured us to this point that we fall under that and should have some room um, for the soft costs that are gonna generate to actually fulfill the rest of the building. Thank you. How many, how many lock, uh, lockers in the varsity area? Uh, currently on the design is 70. And that's enough for varsity? Is that yes, How sir. many do you carry? Uh, we carry a little bit less, but it gives you a little room. Sometimes based on the design, corner areas are a little tough. Uh, uh, but currently, uh, it's going to range from 65 to 70. That's what you'll carry on the varsity? Yes, sir. Okay. Coach, I'd like to say um, thank you for, for putting in the time on on the design of this uh, structure, first of all. Uh, secondly, if there is going to be some money, I'd like for you to uh, ask for something, put a, 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 an addendum to where we don't have to take it, but I've heard several times that at, uh, at a band hall that we would have done this, we would have done that. You know, we would have spent very little money and it would have cost us not that much and we had it in the budget if we would have done it then. You know, so if you have something that... Uh, that you and Coach Rojas can come up with that would, you would like to have, and it can be added to the drawings as an addendum. In other words, we don't have to accept it. You know, we'll take the, the base bid, but we, we have an option to, you know what, add uh, something that you consider. I never played football, so something <laughs> that you consider that you would like to have or would need for, the, for our, our kids in, in football. Uh, right now would be the time to put it on paper and, and give, give uh, our students an option, or give you an option to provide that for our students. Yes, sir. No question, the responsibility was not taken lightly to, to help in the design of the building. Uh, we're trying to do the best we can to be good stewards with the money that right. the district has provided, and we're trying to maximize the space uh, and the needs of the student athletes for teaching and learning uh, to be able to use that facility as best we can and make sure that when we look back, uh, we're not in a what-if situation. Yeah. One thing I am looking at is, uh, on the, the picture of the, of the elevation, the front elevation, the building looks a little low, in my opinion. And I don't know if, uh, if you're, uh, you know, that the doors, I'm going to say seven foot, and you've got three foot on top of that. It looks like maybe three feet. The main, the main entry, the top of the parapet's around 20 feet. Oh, so it's how tall is the building? It's 20 feet? The building feet? itself is, the, the center portion is right around 16 feet, and the other... The other area that's basically the JV locker rooms at 17 feet. It's a pretty tall building. 
Okay, because I'm looking at the, at the drawing. The, the door covers, the, and I would say the doors are 7 -0, unless it's, it's going, you're going with higher doors, and it looks like the top of the door, there's maybe like four feet on top of that, and it gets to the top of the building. Well, the, the door's probably 7 foot. The transom's another 2 feet. The brick accent there is around 10 feet. Okay, so it, the building is 16 feet? Yes. So, okay, then, then I... You're fine. I we'll, just, make, we'll make some adjustments once we start to sort of massage the elevation a little okay. bit. Okay, because I know there's, the no, first, there's no dimensions on, on these yeah, drawings no, yet. Yeah, so. that's why I wrote it down. I just <laughs> All right, one last question. Uh, Coach, which, where will you exit the, the, your student athletes to the weight room? What door? Is it between the yeah. pink and the purple? Yes, down. Then maybe in your addendum, like Mr. Lopez says, going back to Ms. Munoz, how the school, Science building was built apart from the main building, and now they're adding a, a catwalk. Maybe designing <laughs> something like that that gets you to the weight room without having the kids on a rainy day be getting wet. I don't know. That's that's a good idea. Just throwing it out there. Yeah, we can color, add one for East as well because I think yeah. they don't have one, right? Yeah, I know, because I, I was there the other day. I was standing in the sun, so I know it was, it was, <laughs> there was no roof there. <coughs> okay. Ms. Munoz, are you happy with the location? Chile. I mean, uh, Ms. Morales. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> are you happy with the location of the building? Yes, sir. Isidoro, what do you think? Uh, the only concern is the elevation, because I know the current field house is pretty high. And in that area, when it rains, it collects towards where the field house is going to be. So uh, I don't know how high you're going to build it up. Uh, like we did the science wing. The science wing was built up by 10 feet. I don't know where the field house, how high it's going to be uh, built. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, at this point, I'm not really sure what elevation that is. But, I mean, we would, we would raise that building to at least that elevation. Yeah, because in that area the right there, when it rains, Correct. It, the rain the collects area. towards that corner there. Okay. So... Well, that's that's really the next step. If we're approved, we'll get the engineers involved, and then we'll we'll need to find out to get the survey and the geotechnical work started. Okay, they can drain the water for to the practice practice field, drain okay. it to the back. I'll move to accept. Second. We have a motion by Andrew and a second by Isidoro to accept the schem approve the schematic design of the new field house project at Wesco <coughs> High School. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say, say no. Motion carries. Item 13, closed meetings to discuss A, personal matters, Texas Government Code 551.074, number one, employment of personnel, number two, resignations, number three, deliberation regarding appointment, employment, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee, Texas Government Code 551.074, and 551.071. A, deliberation of personnel on organizational chart. B, consultation with legal counsel regarding audit of health insurance. Item, that's it. Time is, where's my watch? 7.55. Time is 7.55 and uh, we're going into executive session. Time is 8.40 and we're back from um, executive session. <laughs> Item number 14, reconvening open meeting. Possible action if necessary and items discussed in closed meeting include one, employment of personnel. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees recommend uh, approval of the employment of personnel as discussed in executive session. So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion by Isidoro and a second by Patrick to approve the employment of personnel as presented by uh, administration. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Item number two, resignations, Dr. Canales. 
Board of Trustees, the, we recommend the approval of resignations as discussed in closed session. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Andrew and a second by Dr. Rodriguez to approve the resignations as presented by administration. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Item number three, approval of organizational chart. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, I recommend the approval of the organizational chart as discussed in executive session. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Patrick and a second by Andrew to approve the organizational chart as presented behind closed session. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Item number 15, adjournment. So moved. Second. We are adjourned. The time is 8.42. This meeting is over.